Welcome to Build, where once again we are live from London. And today we have two very special guests, Chefs Cy King and Joe Dave Myers, who you might know a little bit better as the Hairy Bikers. Hello. Hi, Rachel. <laughs> Hi, Rich. Welcome to Build. How are you both doing today? Uh, very good, thank you. It's lovely, isn't it? Well, it's yeah. summer's upon us, isn't it? And, oh, you know, it's so good. The, so the sea. Lovely afternoon. Yes, <laughs> yes, it is. It is. Very good. Well, we've got loads to chat about, but before we get started, if you've got a question for them, then please tweet it to us on at Build Series LDN or leave a comment on Facebook, and we're going to ask as many as possible in the next 20 minutes. Shall we start with your new book? Yeah. Yes, it's, it's, the, it's in the sixth one in our Hairy Dieters series, mm -hmm. which we full-heartedly started five years ago because we just got morbidly obese. <laughs> and uh, we managed... <laughs> to it's said with a smile. Yeah, no, well, <laughs> you know, we managed to keep it off. And uh, as the series has gone on, we've tried to address problems that we face. And sometimes mm. you want it to be easy. You come home from work, you want to keep the calories there. We still want the flavour. And then we started with titles of chapter pages, things like mm. One Pot Wonders, no more than six ingredients, and then we built the book around that. Mm. And, and, you know, look, we're always going to struggle with where we're two middle-aged men that love food, drinking beer and eating pies. So Who doesn't? It, it's true, <laughs> it's true. So it's, and it's kind of, you know, and that's what the series of books are about. We're always going to struggle with it. So, you know, there's nothing that we do that we just do for doing its sake. It, 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 it has to mean something, and it, and it, and it means that, you know, it's a, it's a great product at the end of it, really. It's a bit like we have the other cookbooks, the ones that are hard-backed, that are like coffee table. We like our cookbooks to be books for life. You know, you, mm. you, you yeah. get them, you keep them, and, and they're there. But these books, I think deliberately they're a paperback book, one of the cheaper, but yeah. it means they're there to be used on a daily basis. This is your, this is your, your working manual, isn't it? And, and it's always great, you know, when we go into book signings, because uh, you guys keep bringing all these books with, like, big thumber prints and gravy on it and... <laughs> <laughs> Post-it notes and, and, and coffee stains, it's great. <laughs> well, do you get a lot of feedback from people? Because you said there, you know, these are, you know, your, you guys love to eat and you love to drink and you want mm. big food. But that's something I think that applies to a lot of people. We oh, all yeah. need, oh, yeah, like, absolutely. a quick... So some of the titles as well, you've got, like, assembly jobs, 15-minute fillers. Is that... Mm. Do you get feedback from fans on what they want from yes, the Yes, we do listen absolutely. to people. Th things like absolutely. tray bakes... People love tray bakes. Whenever we do a recipe for one, be it there's one with salmon and, and fennel in that book, people do them. And there's something about a tray bake, the way that they get slightly mm. crispy. It's still good cooking. It's all mm. in a wanna. And it's great for the family. Uh, things like that we listen to, we try and do more of those. And funny, it's, it's stuff, that's what I had for my supper last night at home. A tray uh, bake? Did you? I did actually, yes. Oh, what's which one? Well, it's the one we're cooking on Saturday kitchen. I thought we'd better practice. <laughs> <laughs> Am I keeping that or are you? <laughs> we're, doing it, we're doing it together, actually. Oh, are we? Oh, yeah. that's it's all right. I've got the measure of it. Excellent. But, but it was really doing. good. And, you know, and the, the um, assembly jobs, we were filming in the Mediterranean last year, which wasn't a diet series. Mm. And there was a gentleman in, in Sardinia, <laughs> and it's a tuna place, and he opened a can of tuna. He got linguine pasta, some really good olive oil, the tuna, capers, lemon zest. Um, some olives. Some olives. Threw it all together. It was really good and full of... That was the first thing I cooked when I came back from Sardinia. And also, <laughs> when you're on, you know, when you're trying to lose some weight and you're, and you're trying to watch the calories that you put in, you, you get hungry. Mm -hmm. and, and what we wanted to do was, because Dave and I had had the same experience, what we wanted to do was actually just have something that, that was quick to prepare and, quick, and, and, you know, that was on the table quickly so you can just eat it. And, uh, and we all have really busy lives, which is partly what Make It Easy is about, just to kind of still have those great flavours, still have those big flavours, but to make them less calorific as all the series of diet books have been. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and, and to, ha to have it quickly, because you're hungry. And with the busy lives in mind, <laughs> this time we give notes on freezing, what, what's good for freezing, and also um, what, what's good for vegetarians. It's really clear. And also for batch cooking, because that's one way you can actually yeah. work ahead for the week. Mm. So you come home from work, you know what you've got there, and it's, it's easy. And you have your favourites you look forward to. Planning, David. Planning. <laughs> yes. We all like planning. Yes. Do you need to do like a good weekly shop at the start of the week and get everything sorted oh, that you want? I love a big shop. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, you kind of haven't even got any room in your trolley because you've bought. <laughs> and for some reason, does, every, does anybody go through a season whereby that you buy loads of beetroot for whatever reason? I keep doing that. I keep buying loads of beetroot and going, why have I bought all this beetroot? 
Anyway, well, I'll quite like it, to be fair. And borscht, right. it's nice. We've got a lovely beetroot soup in there. Right. Well, there's a chapter for your next book, really. Well, or no, beetroot. Well, no, it's in there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Big up the beets. <laughs> Big up the beets. <laughs> British beets, lush. <laughs> so we've already started getting some questions come through on social media. Ooh. So Ellie Bromelo on Facebook is asking about what you do about drinking with weight loss. What drinks are good? What do you go for? Basically, when we did the hairy diet, <laughs> we, were, we, we, we were being weighed on telly. Oh. Now, I'd hit 18 and a half stone, you were... Nearly 20. 20. So, you know, it was different for us. We had to lose weight. And also, we were being weighed on a three-weekly basis on national telly. The first week, we, we couldn't have anything to drink. It was as simple as that. And by <laughs> cracky, the weight dropped off. It nearly killed me. <laughs> but we did. We, we, we filmed at Nigel House. We were filming a series at the same time as the dieters called Everyday Gourmet. And um, one of the contributors, the Michelin starred chef, Nigel Howarth at Northcote Manor. And, um, and he said, stay with me and have, have dinner. And we thought, we can't, Nigel, we can't. He said, it's all right, I'll just do you a bit of halibut and that'd be lovely and some it's salad. Nice. I understand, I understand. All right. He did that and of course the wide waiter came round. Oh. Oh. <laughs> and we fell off the wagon that night. Yes. But literally the, the next day there was like a couple of kilos on and we felt wretched. So, no, nah, you got to knock the booze down. So, and the thing is, look, if you're going for it, you, and, it's, and, and it's about changing the attitudes to, to, to your habits as well, mm. you know, so it's about, and the attitude to, to food that puts, puts weight on you. So, um, it's, it's best just to not drink at all in the first month. And then what's good to drink is clear spirits and things that don't, <laughs> you know, which is what <laughs> I did. Except, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he just wakes up the raging hangover and goes for a cooked breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> It's best not to do that. Uh, it's not to do that. Oh, some sad news. Just it, it's, have to it's, cut the drink. Look, but it also has to be sustainable, you know. So mm. once you've lost your weight, look, you know, Dave and I are not, have never, ever said that we're never, we're never going to drink a pint of beer again and have a pie. Can because the fact of the matter is that it's not sustainable because you just drive yourself crazy. I, I think with the you books, it, that, that's the idea. We, we've had to change our attitude to food. I mean, we still love curries and going out. And I, I, love, I love pizza. That, that's that's going to be the death of me, I'm sure. <laughs> but but I have to be realistic that I can't have that many. And the same with the beers that go with the pizza. Just a bit of balance, really. <laughs> balance, yes, that's it. Is. Balance. <laughs> balance, as opposed to ballast. <laughs> well, you mentioned pizza there, because I was going to ask you both, what is the one food that you really struggle to resist, the one you absolutely love? Oh, me, pizza. Is it pizza? Yeah, any, any pizza or...? Uh, yeah, any pizza. I'm pretty <laughs> fluid on it. No, I live, I live in France a lot of the time, and there's a pizza place that I love. It's 20 miles from where I live. And I worked it out. If I cycle there, I can phone <laughs> my wife up from the bar while I'm having a pint. I can have a pizza, and she'll come and pick me up. So I have a date, have another pint, and then then she put the bike in the car and come home. And that way, it's kind of work. You know, it works. And I get a bit fit, and you know. <laughs> but but you see, if I didn't have the pizza, I wouldn't have to cycle 20 miles. Well, there you go. What about you? Have you got one? Yeah, it, it's it, it's sourdough bread and butter for me. So I just simply don't buy it. So I kind of <laughs> I'm one of those blokes in the trolley with the trolley in the supermarket that goes past the bread aisle and goes. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, no, it's it, it's and 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 there's a great. Um, I've I've just moved and there's a great bake that's called Bake Bake Nation, and oh man, that sourdough bread mm. is to die for, and I keep going past going. No, and I've resisted so far. I'm really quite proud of myself. You I haven't need said to cross that the road. I've only been there a week and a half, so it's this time yet. You know? just, just have a couple of slices in the morning. Oh. You'll be all right. <laughs> no, well, not with the butter and burgundy. You know, the beautiful, beautiful uh, bread and butter with salt crystals and... Oh, and the Normandy uh, butter. butter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah it's great. Isn't it? <gasps> yeah. I hope I haven't sent you like there on the way home. You look like no, no, because it closes <laughs> at three, so I think we'll be all right. Oh, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing I love about all of your recipe books, not just the diet ones, is that they're not. You look at the ingredients list, and I see quite a lot of things you can get in a supermarket. Mm. So often you get recipe books, and it's full of things, and I just think I have no idea where I would even start to buy this. Mm. Is that something that you make a conscious effort yeah. to make sure of? Yeah, yeah it's got yeah. to be achievable. The, the first two cookbooks. 
which which were they were kind of travel and there were a bit of comedy and and that there was one recipe for a Mexican mole that had sixty four <laughs> ingredients with obscure <laughs> chilies and uh, for a laugh when we put the recipe in we put what was it, put a dishwasher West Highland Terrier and a lawnmower <laughs> on the bottom and nobody noticed because got that bored <laughs> yeah. um, halfway through the recipes the ingredients list and just went oh yes no nah, uh, <laughs> by by the time we we did food tour of Britain mm. we, we, it was. We have got a really good editor, Amanda Harris, and Amanda says, you, you want to write a cookbook that people are going to use if mm. you're going to do a cookbook. And so basically, yes, it has to be achievable. Or, you know, these days you can get so much online that's there the next day. Mm. So if there is something, but you need to tell people mm. and just be upfront. Mm. And tell them where to get it. Yeah. You know, yeah. If there is a, an ingredient that is particular to that dish. Um, that that makes the dish, then it's worth it's worth looking for. But we tend to avoid that if we can. Mm. What are the sort of things? Because some some of the more obscure items pop up quite a lot. What are the kind of essentials that might not seem obvious that you think people should have in their cupboards? A good olive oil, you know, yeah. it, it's it's brilliant, and you can fry in it. You know, it's it's just such a good thing for salads and everything else. Good salt, yeah, good salt, good pepper, good just good a, a kind of plethora of spice. But what mm -hmm. you have to remember about space, it does go stale, so it's not going to be there for the... It's not, you know, you, you can't let it be a cupboard monster. It's been there for 12 <laughs> years, and you get your spice out and go, oh, then, well, this doesn't taste of anything. Well, I'm not flipping surprised. <laughs> it's been there for eight months, you know, so you have to... So, like, and, and because there's no, there's no calories in spice, there's no calories in flavour, because it's so... It's great if you are kind of pushing towards that. Um, mm. Towards that goal. Spice is kind of... And great chilies as well. They're always good. Well, for me, they are. Yeah, if you like them. Yeah, we, 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 like we, them. we get <laughs> I don't like garlic. What can I use instead? Well, just leave it out. Yeah, you know, <laughs> as I say, we chilli. I don't like to, I don't I put don't, it in. Well, don't put it in. Uh, <laughs> now, obviously, it's rude to pick favourites, but I'm going to ask you to anyway. Of your new book, is there a particular recipe for each of you that is your favourite one? I, I love the garlic chicken. It's... Mm. It basically, it's a, it's a chicken breast, which which is a dieter's friend. It's, if you cook cook it properly, it's butterflied. It's marinated in garlic, um, if you like garlic, olive oil, salt and pepper, and some lemon <laughs> zest. <laughs> and then it's just griddled, two minutes each side, so it's like so big, easy. juicy a scallop. Meanwhile, you just heat some um, kale or cavallonero, your kind of brassica of choice. Shred it up in a pan, two minutes. Pour some cannellini beans in couple of minutes to warm through and then you serve that with cherry tomatoes on the top sprinkle red wine vinegar and it goes so well with the beans and the cabbage then the chicken God. that you've just <laughs> cooked you slice it like that all the juices go on so this big bowl of color with the cabbage the beans and that and the vinegar vinegar is important and then the chicken really um and that's about 350 calories i love that one and, you know, if you're not, a, a big hunk of French bread with it is great. <laughs> Just get the bread on there. Get the bread in. Yeah, <laughs> well, you've, got to, you've got to mop it up, haven't you? You've got to do it. Have you got one, Si? Uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a prawn curry that we do that's kind of like a Thai spice curry, and it's so good because all those fl it's all those spices. I'm a big, well, we both are. We're big spice fiends. Mm. So, and it's just, and it's a lovely balanced recipe, and it's really kind of light, and it, it, it's lovely. It's lovely. Mm. And, uh, and you can eat lots of it. Because I think that's only about 290 calories, madly. God, this sounds so good. I put too many food questions in too early before <laughs> dinner. I'm like, yeah. I'm starving. <laughs> <laughs> now, with this book as well, you mentioned it is the sixth in your Hairy Dieters series. But it's you've done over 20 books so far, it, which is incredible. How do you keep things fresh? How do you keep coming up with ideas? Well, because we're completely obsessed on f about food. <laughs> um, and, and we've been four times around the world now on motorcycles oh. and experienced. And the whole thing about the hairy bikers is that is, is celebrating the diversity in each other and the culture of each, of each other around food. Mm. And, um, and food's always been the kind of washing line that we've hung all the programs on because through food you get the character and personality of people, the character and personality of a, of a region and then of a nation. So, so we've got, had quite a lot of experience and have been incredibly lucky doing what we do. Mm. And it's fun. Yeah, the thing is, the fun. more you get exploring the world of food gl globally, the, the chefs you meet, the, the more exciting it gets, you know. I, d I do worry sometimes I'm going to run out of time to eat it all, really. <laughs> but it's all there. It's a fascinating world. I mean, we did the Mediterranean. Um, first of all, we, we, we said we're going to do a series on the Mediterranean. 
But then you find out there are 21 countries bordering the Mediterranean mm. and something like 180 islands. So I think, wow. uh-oh, that's a lot bigger than you think. And we just did a portion. I'd love to do more around the Mediterranean. Uh, mm. Even going down into the Middle Eastern countries as well, it's still Mediterranean, which is a unique culture. And there, I think, we find some of the best food in the world. It's I really of, do. It is, and it's one of the yeah. greatest cuisines in the world, the Mediterranean cuisine. Imagine if you get into Chinese food and Indian food with, with that level of detail and regionality. Um, yeah. Oh, it'd be wonderful. Because I was going to say, have you've done lots of travel shows as well, like travel cookery shows. Mm. Is there anywhere left on the bucket list for mm. you that you want to visit? Oh, yeah, there's loads. Give us a couple, the, give us a couple. Oh, well, there's Jakarta, there's the Philippines, there's Siberia. Yeah, there's I'd, love to, <laughs> I'd love to do more, more in South America. We've never been to Brazil or Peru or Chile. We've only really been to Argentina, uh, which was in the early days. That, that was an amazing trip. I'd like to, to visit Russia. I was in mm. Russia in November... Um, just, just for a break in Moscow, St. Petersburg. But you look at that map, and all the way from China to basically the Baltic, Amazing. you've got Russia. What's mm. going on in between? Now that I'd love to find out. And we haven't done New Zealand, we haven't done Tasmania, we haven't done the food cultures in, in Australia. We've we got the series title, though. Yeah. Hairy Down Under. <laughs> <laughs> It's got to be done, hasn't it, really? I don't think the BBC's <laughs> ever been too keen on that title, David. I have no idea no. why. We might Lord. have to put that one out on Tinternet. On Tinternet, yeah. yeah. That might be a YouTube show, that one. Yes. <laughs> you want to trademark that straight away. They can put it on at 10 o'clock, it'll be fine. Yeah, it'll be all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it'll be yeah. all right. <laughs> And in between all of this as well, we're really sadly running out of time, but one thing I want to talk to you about is the Cornbury Music Festival. Mm. Because you're doing a pop-up event, is it there? Can you tell us a bit about this? Yeah. Well, I, it's, it's our first pop-up restaurant. Okay. And we thought very, very long about this. Mm. But it's the planets aligned, really. Last year when we, we did a Saturday Kitchen Live from the Hampton Court Flower Show, mm -hmm. we were cooking most of over, Everything was cooked over fire, you know, with, with wood-fired ovens and barbecues. So we're going to do four sittings, 150 people a time. Uh, everything's cooked over wood fire. Uh, we've got like sea bream and chicken, and it, it really works so well. Mm. And, and we're doing it properly. We've got a team of eight chefs who are working with us. We've done all wow. the tests, and we are going to be there for the three days. So we're not doing it half-heartedly and putting our name to it and walking away. <laughs> and, and, and we're going to have a good time. Oh, it's a great yeah. and it's yeah. and it's great inclusive food as well. So yes. you can share and you can get your hands in. And it's just it's kind of festival food with a little bit of a little bit of a little yeah. bit more finesse it's a bit and style nice. and yeah. a bit nice. And it's, there's some character to it. So it's going to be great. But it's colourful. It's tasty in summer. And yeah. oh, it's what you want in a festival. And it, and it is undercover as well. <laughs> yeah. And we serve drinks, drinks, which is definitely <sighs> what you want at this festival. Yeah. Yeah, so come and see us at Cornbury. Yeah, no, I do. <laughs> it's uh, mid July. We're, th we're there for the three days. And you're looking forward to the festival itself as well. This is quite a good work set up, really, isn't it? Yes, but I'll tell you what I'm looking forward That's to because he, people don't really know this, he, he's had a band since he was a teenager. And when, every, uh, when the last act, <laughs> well, what's the name, finishes uh, on Saturday night? Uh, uh, Alanis, Alanis Morissette. Alanis Morissette yeah. finishes. Yeah. Little Moscow go on. Is this, is this for real? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It is. I've seen the set list. It's good. <laughs> so, and, and they are very good, actually. So, so not only do we feed you, well, he's going to be jumping up and down, playing his drums till 2 o'clock in the morning. That's mm. going to be a good night out. Be a good night out. So that's on the Saturday, Saturday yeah. night. So we'll, we'll kick off about 11 o'clock on, um, on the campsite stage. So that'll be a hoot. So everybody will be smashed and have a good time, whatever we play. Yeah. So it's going to be fine. <laughs> yes, if, if the drummer smells of smoke and cabbage, that's because they'll be cooking. All <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> get on, you're on, Kingy, you're on. Yeah. Home, <laughs> well, it's good to get that warning in. So finally then, before we have to say goodbye, is there anything else you're up to this year that you can tell us about? What have you got planned? Um, we've got a lot more festivals. We're doing a festival in Cambridgeshire mm -hmm. and at Longleat and the Good Food Show this summer. Um, we're doing some food at the Boat Show. We're doing a lot more kind of festivals this year. Yeah. And we think we're going to go back on tour in theatres early mm, next year, early but next we're year. planning that because mm. it's been five years. We did have a good time on the road. Yeah, it was um, great. Wasn't yeah, it? It was good fun. yeah, it was a good laugh. Mm -hmm. Just chatting and having fun. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, we're quite good at that. Aren't we? Oh, another, another book. Oh, we've got another book out for Christmas. Oh, yeah. We're probably nice. another one for next year. Yeah. So, the book. So, we're, we're busy and 
doing a lot of gardening. That's a very busy year. Yeah. Yeah. Are you going to perform at any of the other festivals? Is that? <laughs> no, we'll see how this one. We'll see how this first. one goes. <laughs> no, no. He will be performing with his pans and knives. That's how we make yeah. our money. Yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yes. We'll be performing with pans and knives, but not with Little Moscow. Okay. I don't think. I don't think. I think. Uh, I think one's enough for the year. <laughs> I want to know. Rockstock. Uh, other than Rockstock, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Probably. I'm looking forward to this extra sideshow divergence that keeps going. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good name for the band. I know extra sideshow side divergence. <laughs> <laughs> you'd, never, you'd never get that on like a billboard though, would you? No. <laughs> we'll work on it, we'll work on it. Thank you. Thank well, you. sadly, that is all we have got time for. Uh -huh. So oh, we're going to do one final plug for your book. The Hairy Diet is Make It Easy is out now and it's full of great recipes. You should definitely all go and buy it. Please give it up one more time for Cy and Dave. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank, Thank you. you very much.